As I've travelled around Britain in 2013, I've seen firsthand the impact of the government's heartless, inept policies and our failed economic system. In Camden, I heard from people who were being told they were fit to work when they very clearly weren't. In Great Yarmouth, I spoke to college students facing giving up their studies because they couldn't afford the bus fare. And in Kirklees, I saw a food bank packed in the aisles and the corridors with desperately needed supplies from people who can't afford to feed themselves. And that's certainly the domestic story of 2013, the rise of the food bank. It's a symbol of the fact that we have politics working for the good of the few, not for the common good. Internationally, the story of the year is undoubtedly the report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The scientific debate is over. It is clear that we need to change our ways now to avoid catastrophic climate change. Our common future depends on it. Unfortunately, here in Britain, we have a government that's refusing to take substantive action. They're enthusiastic about fracking, and they're refusing to take seriously the need to provide warm, comfortable, affordable to heat homes. But when historians look back on 2013, there was one event in Britain that really made a positive international impact. That was the vote in Parliament against military intervention in Syria. It influenced events that made a big impact on US foreign policy. And future historians may well mark it as the point in which we finally ended the disastrous policy of intervention that took us into Afghanistan and Iraq. What's more, we're now seeing in Syria the collection and disposal of chemical weapons under legal UN auspices. This marks a new point in global history. Not bombing really did make a difference. Our heart goes out, however, to the millions of Syrians suffering under the civil war. We can only hope that the peace talks in Geneva next month will make a difference. We can't have a great deal of impact on that, but what we can do is have an impact on the humanitarian situation. I welcome the fact that David Cameron, Ed Miliband and Nick Clegg came out together to support the £4 billion UN appeal for humanitarian assistance. But that simply isn't enough. The UN has also asked for assistance, for Britain to take its share of the most vulnerable refugees. The response to that has been silence, and that is a disgrace. In the build-up to bombing, you told us, Mr Cameron, that you cared about the plight of vulnerable Syrians. Now's the time to demonstrate that that wasn't just rhetoric trying to take us into war. 16 nations, among them the US, France and Germany, have agreed to take their share of the most vulnerable refugees. As one of the world's richest nations, and as a state that has a long history of involvement in the Middle East, much of it disastrous, we must act on this issue. I wish everyone in Britain a good 2014, and I call on you, Mr Cameron, to make this a great start to the year for Syrian refugees offered asylum in Britain. And that could be the start of a reversal of our dangerous, toxic rhetoric around immigration. Over to you, Mr Cameron.